Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Science, and today I want to tell you about the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, also known as matrix mechanics. This is another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The matrix formulation of quantum mechanics was the first consistent formulation of quantum theory, and it was first proposed by Heisenberg, Born, and Jordan as early as 1925. It is equivalent to the later wave mechanics formulation of Schrödinger, and they're both unified in the state space formalism. So why do we care about matrix mechanics? The matrix formulation is most useful when we deal with finite discrete bases, and the reason for that is because then it reduces to the simple rules of matrix multiplication. In fact, for most practical solutions of quantum mechanics, we use the matrix formulation. Whether we want to solve quantum mechanics on pen and paper using analytical solutions, or we want to use the largest supercomputers on Earth to find numerical solutions. In this video, I will introduce how to write down KETs, bras, and operators in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, and then I will work through a number of examples to see how the usual rules of matrix multiplication can be used to calculate quantum mechanical quantities. So let's go! To introduce the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, we start with KETs. We expand the ket psi in a basis u, where the expansion coefficients c are given by the bracket between u and psi. These c coefficients are what we call the representation of the ket psi in the u basis, and if you need a refresher, check out the video on representations. To define the matrix formulation of kets, we arrange these coefficients into a column vector, and we can do it either in terms of the brackets u psi or directly in terms of the expansion coefficient c. Therefore, in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, kets are written as column vectors. Now that we know how to write kets as column vectors, we next want to look at bras. We expand the bra psi in a basis u in terms of the same expansion coefficient c that we used to expand the corresponding ket, but in this case the expansion coefficients are the complex conjugates c star. Again, if you need a refresher about this, check the video on representations that is linked in the description. To define the matrix formulation of bras, we arrange this coefficient into a row vector. We can again write this out in terms of the brackets psi u, or in terms of the complex conjugates of the c coefficients. Therefore, in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, bras are written as row vectors. After kets and bras, the next quantity we need are operators. An operator A can be written in the u basis as the sum over the outer products of the basis states, and the expansion coefficients A i j are given by the matrix elements of A with respect to the basis states. The very name matrix element for this quantity comes from the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, as we will see in a moment. The expansion coefficients for an operator are labeled by two indices, so what we will do is to arrange them in the form of a square matrix, with the first index denoting the row of the matrix, and the second index the column of the matrix. Therefore, in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, operators are written as matrices. As a summary, in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics, a ket psi, which is expanded in terms of the c coefficient in the u basis, is written as a column vector of these c coefficients. A bra psi, expanded in terms of the c star coefficient, is written as a row vector, and an operator A, expanded in terms of the matrix elements A i j, is written as a matrix. At this point you will all be thinking, okay, we can arrange the representations of kets, bras and operators as vectors and matrices, but what is the point of all this? And here is the point of matrix mechanics. When we write states and operators as vectors and matrices, then all the manipulations of these objects that we need to perform in quantum mechanics can be performed in terms of the usual rules of matrix multiplication. In the rest of the video, I will look at the four operations listed here to see what they look like in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics. Some of these expressions give scalars, some give kets, and some give operators, so we will see how all this fits together in the language of matrix multiplication. Let's start with the bracket psi phi, which we know gives a scalar. We first write both psi and phi in the u basis, and we do this in terms of expansion coefficients c and d. Calculating the bracket between psi and phi, we first write down the expansion of both these terms in the u basis by copying the expansions we wrote on the left. We can then rearrange this expression in the usual manner, and we obtain this double sum over i and j. As the basis is orthonormal, we recognize this bracket as delta ij, so the double sum becomes sum over i ci star di. 
This last expression here is the expression for a scalar product of a row and a column vector. To see this explicitly, we write the bra psi as a row vector of C star coefficients, and we write the ket phi as a column vector of D coefficients. Using the usual rules of matrix multiplication, we first get C1 star times D1, we then add C2 star times D2, and so on, and combining this term into a sum, we obtain this. Comparing this term with this term, we see that indeed they are the same. Therefore, a bracket in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics is the matrix product of a row vector with a column vector. Next, let's look at the action of an operator A on a ket psi, giving us another ket psi prime. We start in the same way by first writing both psi prime and psi in the U basis, and in this case the corresponding expansion coefficients are C prime and C. The ket psi prime is represented by the C prime coefficients and the ket psi is represented by the C coefficients. Therefore, to describe the action of the A operator, we need to find what the C prime coefficients are in terms of the C coefficients. To do that, we first write C i prime equals the bracket between U i and psi prime. We then use the definition of psi prime in terms of A to write this. We then insert the identity operator after A. We then insert the resolution of the identity in the U basis as shown here. And we then rearrange to obtain a sum over J of these two terms. The first term is the matrix element Aij, and the second term is Cj. So we can write the whole thing as sum over J Aij Cj. This last expression here is the expression for the action of a matrix on a column vector. To see this explicitly, we first write down the matrix A. We then write down the column vector C. And then we use the usual rules of matrix multiplication. So we start with the first row of the matrix acting on the column vector to obtain the first entry here. And we can then continue with the subsequent rows of the matrix to obtain the subsequent entries here. Each of the rows corresponds to one of these sums here. So we can collect all the rows into the column vector for C prime. As expected, multiplying a matrix with a column vector gives us another column vector, just as the action of an operator on a ket gives us another ket. The next example I want to look at is the adjoint operator, which describes the action of an operator in the dual space. We start with the matrix element ij of the adjoint of A. This is equal to the matrix element of A dagger with respect to ui and uj. We can then use conjugation to write this as uj A ui star. And this simplifies to complex conjugate of the matrix element ji of A. What this is showing is that we need to exchange ij by ji and then take the complex conjugate. Therefore, in order to go from the operator A to the adjoint operator A dagger, we first write the operator A in matrix form as shown here. And we then transform it into the adjoint operator by exchanging rows with columns and then taking the complex conjugate of each entry. Therefore, the matrix formulation of the adjoint of an operator A is given by the transpose conjugate matrix of the original operator. The final example I want to look at is how we write an operator as an outer product of two states. We again start by writing psi and phi in the U basis in terms of the expansion coefficients C and D. We then build the outer product psi phi and then insert the expansion of these two states in the U basis as shown here. Rearranging this expression as usual, we obtain a double sum over i and j for some coefficients ci dj star, and then the outer product of the basis states. Comparing this to the usual expression for an operator in a particular basis, we identify the ci dj star term as the matrix elements of this operator. To see this explicitly in the matrix formulation, we write the ket psi as the column vector of C and multiply it by the bra phi as the row vector of D. Using the standard rules of matrix multiplication, we first combine C1 with D1 star to get the first entry here, then C1 again with D2 star to get the second entry, and so on to fill the first row. We can then repeat all these multiplications, but now with the C2 rather than C1, so we obtain the second row here, and so on. And as expected, the result is a matrix whose entries are precisely the matrix elements of the operator up here. The outer product is therefore given by the matrix multiplication of a column vector with a row vector, and the result is a matrix. Overall, we have looked at four examples to show that the usual rules of matrix multiplication allow us to do the usual operations of quantum mechanics in the matrix formulation of this theory. 
A bracket is written as a row vector times a column vector, which gives a scalar. The action of an operator A on a ket psi is written as the multiplication of a matrix by a column vector, which gives another column vector. The adjoint operator is written as the transpose conjugate matrix. And the outer product of two states is written as the multiplication of column vector with row vector, which gives a matrix. You can play with these and similar expressions yourself, and here I have two more. You should show that the first one gives a scalar, and the second one gives a matrix. So what have we learned today? We have introduced the formulation of quantum mechanics known as matrix mechanics. This is the most useful formulation for the practitioner of quantum mechanics, because it reduces all operations to matrix multiplications. If you like this video, or if you would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.